In this video, we're going to take a look at the View Program Preferences tab. So we need to start by going into Program Preferences. So I can click this icon right here, this one right here, or go to Tools and um, Preferences. And that'll open up the Preferences window, and we're going to take a look at this View tab right here. There's a lot of things that you can turn on and off in the View tab. Um, the first one here, highlight selection. What this means is if this is checked, any time that I click on an object, it's going to change it to whatever color is selected here to let me know that it's actually highlighted. To show you what that's like, I'll hit OK here. Let me just bring up a design. And if I select any object, it's going to highlight and it's going to show me it in that blue color. If I go to Program Preferences again, go to the View tab. If I select a different color, hit OK, and I select something, it's going to highlight in that color. So you have the ability to change that in the Program Preferences in the View tab. I'm going to go back to the one that I typically use, that blue. The next thing is Show Crosshairs on Input Mode. What that means is if I'm digitizing something, like a run stitch, I have a crosshair attached to my cursor, the vertical and horizontal line that goes from my cursor. If I turn that off, it just goes away, the vertical and horizontal lines, and you just see the little plus symbol for the cursor. That's what that, that means there. Show size um, tooltip. Um, we have show backdrop below a grid. There's a lot of things here. So show um, size tooltip. If we um, have that selected, when you create or resize an object in the software, a tooltip will show up below the cursor. So if we see that little tooltip that you have there, it's saying length 7.8 millimeters, um, it's just a little thing that's attached to um, different options that you have. So if I click and drag you can see that little tool tip be below my cursor will actually show up and let me know dimensions and different things like that. If I come back in here to view, show a backdrop below the grid. If you don't have this selected, when you have a grid open right here, if you load the design or an image and you don't have it to show up below the grid, it will actually be on top of the grid so you won't see the grid pattern. But usually when you're digitizing something you have a grid open, you want to see the grid over the top of the image. So that's where that comes into play. If, uh, if you um, don't want to see the grid over the top of the image, you just uncheck this box. Um, show selection controls. This is something that I really like. This is something that um, is really, really helpful. Whenever you select something, you can see that it actually will display. Um, it's kind of hard to see though. Let me turn off the grid too. I'm going to click and drag this off to the side. But when I have this selected, you can see that um, you have these controls down here around the selection box. So that allow, gives you extra things you can do like zooming in, making copies, going into edit mode, um, closing a path, nudging by clicking those little arrows, or even delete it. So there's a lot of different options you have. If you turn it off, those all go away. So if you don't like those, you can just click on this icon right here and it will take it away. Lock the property sequence view in library windows. This is something that uh, people used to get in a lot of trouble with before we gave this as an option and that what would happen is people would accidentally pin or close the properties tab or the sequence view and, um, and not know how to get it back so by locking it you can't accidentally do that. So just taking a look over here on the right side of my screen, you'll notice that there is 
there isn't any like kind of options right here but if I turn off this lock and hit OK you can see that now I have this pin option and, and a close so if I click on the close it'll just take this away by locking it it just ensures that that won't happen it ensures that you can't accidentally close it or the sequence view and um, so you just can turn that on and off hide activation codes this is something for educators or dealers I'm not going to really show this because I don't want it's kind of hard I don't want people to know how to find somebody else's activation code but by hiding this it'll make sure that if you're recording any videos or anything like that like I do that you won't accidentally give away your serial number to somebody else so I definitely recommend that you have that turned on so that nobody can steal that from you draw selection size this box is has to do with um, this dimensions over here you can see with this selected it's giving me the dimensions here so if you turn that off these dimensions will go away so that's what that means show notes in the sequence view there are some things like applique and different things like that where you can see notes and if I come in here and I'll just create something really quick and I'll convert that over to applique um, if I come down here you can see this applique piece is selected if I hit the plus symbol you'll see that I have some notes here so you have a stop sign and it says before proceeding do this same within here so with it activated you have the ability to see those notes and I definitely recommend keeping it on um, I think it's very useful because any tool that you have steps or procedures that you need to remember to do something um, for specific techniques and stuff it's good to have that because they do show up in your print preview as well so go back to that so I do recommend having show notes and sequence view use icons on the properties tab this is another one where um, you might not want to use it at first when you're getting to know the software and what we're talking about here is up here in the upper right in the properties tabs you can see that it is displaying icons here and it's not spelling it out it's not saying what it is it's just showing you an icon if I deselect that and hit OK it's going to actually spell out what each one is so if I select something it's going to say fill underlay column gradient it's going to actually just give me the words for what it is if I come back in here and I change that back to using icons you can see that all those words go away and you're just left with an icon and if you hover over the icon it will display um, what the name is this is kinda how I use it because there's less scrolling that I have to do by utilizing it this way go back into program preferences here and go to the view tab and the last thing that you have is you can change the theme color and the theme color is like this gray right here in the background you can change that I do like silver the best but if you select something like aqua and you hit OK you can see that it changes the whole look of the software really and I can come back in here go to view and and choose a different one like maybe this Luna blue and it's going to change it to a blue background around around the edge there so let's take a look here you have um, obsidian black and it's kind of really just a gray color and that can be helpful if you're doing a lot of stuff like at night or in the dark and you don't want the screen to be too bright because you can even change the background color too and it will just be a little bit easier on the eyes and go to view and then you have silver and that's the one that I prefer and those are the different options that you have for um, the view tab in the program preferences